Hello everybody, Mike Westfall here from McDonald Garden Center, located in the Hampton Roads area of Virginia. We hope you are all doing well today. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about moles and voles, and specifically the solution to moles and voles. That's what we all want, right? We wanna get rid of these pesky little pets, or these pesky little pests, I should say, um, out of our yard. They cause a lot of damage. Uh, I know they cause us a lot of heartache. Uh, you know, fine for, you know, woodland areas or for out in fields where we're not walking in, um, in our yard, but in our lawns, in our landscape, they can cause lots of problems. Moles can cause a lot of issues in the lawn. Voles can actually kill a lot of plants. And that's really what I want to talk about first, is I just want to give you a little bit of information about what a mole is, what a vole is, and a little bit about the tunnels and, and how they kind of live their lives. Uh, because it's good to kind of know that so we can attack specific problems. And so the first thing I always like to start with is mole. M for meat eater. That is one of the most important things here to kind of remember is moles are meat eaters. Moles eat insects. They eat earthworms, grubs, ground crickets, lots of different things that are living in the soil. So there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to attack that problem and we're going to talk about one specific way here today. But moles are meat eaters. That's the most important thing to know about them. They're also mammals. Um, they are furry. They have very kind of webbed feet and they're extremely, extremely good diggers. They they love to dig. In fact, that's what they do. They live a majority of their life underground. Uh, females uh, usually have uh, their, their um, uh, litter in the spring, so typically about six to seven um, in a litter, so they can multiply pretty quickly. If you've got four or five females in the lawn, in, in your yard, in your area, then you can have up to you know, 25 to 30 uh, new offspring each spring. And so they can multiply very quickly. They can also be somewhat nomadic. We'll talk about that a little bit too, uh, because they can also start to kind of transfer from one yard to the next. Um, and, and I'll talk a lot about that as we go along. But the most important thing to realize is that moles are eating insects. And they're in your lawn eating insects, and that is what they're there to do. And they love earthworms, but they love grubs more. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit when we get into their food source and how we're going to attack that problem. All right, the next one is, what is a vole? So voles are vegetarians. Voles uh, don't like to dig as much. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit when we get into the tunnel system. But voles are vegetarian. So V for vegetarian, M, mole, meat eater, V, vegetarian, vole. So easy to kind of remember. Voles are little mice, basically. It looks like a little field mouse. Uh, you typically don't see them. Again, they kind of come out at night. They're a little bit more active at night, but they eat the root systems of plants. So they can cause some serious damage. Now, moles cause a lot of lawn damage, cause tunnels. They're a pain when you're mowing the lawn. Your, you know, your, your, uh, your, your tires of your uh, uh, lawn mower get stuck in them. It causes a lot of issues when you're walking across your lawn. But voles can really cost you a lot of money because voles can eat the root system of a plant and they love new root systems. So if you've ever planted something new, and then all of a sudden the plant falls over and dies maybe two or three days later and there's no root system it's because a vole got it so voles eat root systems they eat plants and they specifically love root systems and there's a couple that they don't like to eat daffodils name one um, and there's a couple other ones that they won't really typically mess with but for the most part they will eat pretty much any root system. So voles can cost you a lot of money when they start to take out some of your landscape plants. They can take out older plants. They can cause damage to older plants where sometimes you'll start to lose portions of, an, of a shrub, an established shrub, and you don't know why. Well, it could be voles. Uh, so voles can cause a lot of problems in the landscape and it can be a lot of uh, a hassle. And we'll talk about a specific solution that I have for them if you just wanna attack them. But let's look at the tunnel system. So tunnel systems are important to understand. As I mentioned, moles are super, super diggers. They love to dig. They dig pretty much all day long, all night long. Uh, they're constantly digging and cleaning out their tunnels. So let's first talk about those hills. If you ever have hills in your yard or excess dirt, that's their clean out area. Moles really spend almost a majority of their life underground, so they rarely come up to the surface. Uh, but if you ever find a hill or a pile of dirt, um, it's usually where they're cleaning out their tunnels. So maybe after a, a heavy rain or after you're maybe you're doing some yard work, you might see some clean out tunnels or some clean out hills. That is basically all that is. Now, there's feeding tunnels, and then there's, there's living areas. So there's a main tunnel. Typically, they have formed a very large main tunnel, a main kind of highway system. 
that can connect multiple yards too. So it's kind of their main tunnel, it's a, it's a really traveling path, think of it as like the highway. And then there's lots and lots of little side tunnels, nesting areas, and all of these are pretty deep in the surface. They can be anywhere from two to four feet deep. They can really get down there. Um, and that is a major home system. We're gonna talk about that a lot because it's super important to understand a little bit about moles and voles and how they live so that we can try and get rid of them. And then of course, their feeding area. This is a great little image of that. So their feeding runway, so you can see that right up here at the top, feeding runway, feeding tunnels, those are on the top surface. Those are the ones that are causing us all of the problems. Um, so if you've ever got issues with tunnels in your yard, it's most likely a mole because they love to dig and they're looking for insects and that's about in their feeding areas and that's their feeding tunnels. So it's important to kind of understand that. Now you can see that permanent tunnel right here in that kind of middle area. The permanent tunnel is something that they have built and established and it is going to take a, uh, a lot to get them out of that because that is something they've spent a lot of effort and time. And then of course they've got their nesting areas. So nesting areas um, are going to be where they're going to kind of live and, and kind of be and store food. They've got store food, storage food areas. They've got nesting areas. Um, so it's good to kind of understand that. We might come back to this diagram a couple times just so we can kind of establish um, how to kind of attack them if you're having an issue with, with uh, moles. Um, and speaking of that, let's talk about the solution. So that's what we're all here. Now we know that moles are meat eaters, voles are vegetarians. We understand their tunnel system a little bit, and we're gonna come back to a couple of those topics here and there throughout. It's not super important to know everything, the life cycle, all of that about moles and voles. It's just important to understand why they're there. Moles are there for the insects, the grubs, the earthworms, different eat insects that are in the soil that they wanna eat. And the voles are not as heavy diggers, but they eat your plants. So it's important to know that. We'll go back to this kind of tunnel system here to show you just one quick point here. Voles don't like to dig as much, but they love to be underground too because they feel protected. They're little tiny field mouse, right? So we don't want, they don't wanna be out and about with predators. So typically, they're going to use this tunnel system to kind of work their way into your landscape bed. So if you've got moles, then voles can come in. Typically, you don't have voles and you don't have moles. So if you've got moles, you're probably gonna get moles if you don't have them already. So if we've just got mole issues, then we need to attack the moles because eventually, you can, uh, eventually you'll have a problem with voles. Because voles don't like to dig as much, they're gonna divert off of these tunnel systems into your flower beds and start to eat your plants. So let's talk about the solution. We've got a great solution here at McDonald Garden Center. And if you don't live in our neck of the woods, you should be able to get some of these products and we can talk about a couple different ways that you can kind of attack it. But this is really the solution. It's a two-fold solution. One is using Milky Spore, which I will talk about here in a minute. And the other one is using Repellex or a repellent. It doesn't have to be Repellex. Repellex is our favorite brand. It's our favorite solution to repel them out of your yard because it lasts a long time. And so it's a really, really good one. We'll talk about that. We'll get into specifics there as well. But Milky Spore is a great one. Why do we love this solution? Because it's completely organic. It's completely safe. Safe for pets, safe for wildlife, safe for lots of different things. You can walk on the lawn right after applying either one of these products. They're completely organic, completely safe, and you don't have to worry about any of those kind of side effects if you're using poisons or traps, if you've got pets, if you've got animals, if you've got squirrels and wildlife. It can really cause problems if you're using poisons and different types of things like that. So we really recommend this two-fold solution and we really think it's the best. So the first one I wanna talk about is Milky Spore. So Milky Spore is a powder. It's a spore, which means it's a beneficial bacteria, basically. It's a bacillus, and you probably see a lot of these when we're talking about caterpillars or different types of things, eating your cold crops, your spinach, your lettuce, and things like that. You've probably heard of BT before if you've ever worked in the garden. Uh, but bacillus, or bacteria, is a way to affect certain types of things. And so milky spore basically kills Japanese beetle grubs. So remember when I mentioned the food source of a uh, mole is going to be earthworms, ground crickets, and grubs? 
Grubs are their number one food source. And why is that? Well, grubs are super, super protein packed. They're fat, they've got a lot of energy stored in them. And so one grub equals 10 earthworms. So moles are gonna go after grubs a lot more than they will after earthworms. In fact, a lot of times people use milky spore and they've come to find, if they only use milky spore, that they think that they're feeding them because the tunnel systems get more aggressive and they seem like they have more and more and more. But that's because you're forcing the moles to have to eat more insects, different insects. They're having to hunt for more. Whereas if they have grubs, they don't have to hunt for as much. So Japanese beetle grubs are one of the number one grub source in our soil. Grubs are the larva stage of a beetle. So it could be lots of other beetles in the ground, but Japanese beetles are one of the number one most popular grubs that you're gonna find in your ground. If you're ever digging in your yard, if you're a gardener and you dig a hole to plant a shrub or to do something in your yard, and you see those little white grubby things, these guys right here, if you ever see those, that is a Japanese beetle grub most likely. It could be another beetle, but most likely it's a Japanese beetle grub. I'm gonna show you a couple images here in a second. But what I want to get across here real quick is let's attack their main food source. This will irritate them. And I'll also pause here for a second and tell you that this is a process. <laughs> this will take some time. So be prepared to continue to do these things over a course of time. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along, but it's not a easy, quick, quick, quick fix. This is gonna be a process that we're gonna to have to go through and we'll talk about why I don't recommend traps and why we don't use poisons and things like that. We'll get into that as, as well. But milky spore is going to attack their food source. I wanna get across the, the solution here real quick before we get into what are the other solutions that you could try and different home remedies that people have tried over the, uh, over the course of the years. Uh, but Milky Spore is our number one product. Now you can get this a lot of different places. This is a powder. It comes in a, uh, I think it's a two and a half pound, or sorry, 10 ounce, 10 ounce, and this does 2,500 square feet. And it also comes in a two and a half pound, and this does 10,000 square feet. So if you've got a larger area, then I would get this one. If you've got a smaller area, you can use the smaller one. Uh, but this is a great product, and here's how it works. It's a powder, I mentioned it's a bacteria. It's going to basically, when you apply it, and let's talk about how you apply it first before I tell you how it works. Uh, the way to apply it is it's a powder. You can get a dispensing tube. They sell a dispensing tube. It's just a cardboard tube with a little Parmesan grater on the bottom so you can tap it every four feet. But that's how you wanna apply it. You wanna apply it every four feet. I use a teaspoon. You just open up the bag, shake it up a little bit, make sure you kind of make sure that powder hasn't settled. It is a powder, so it's light, it's airy. We wanna take a nice level teaspoon, not tablespoon, teaspoon, and apply it every four feet. So what I typically tell people is just take a nice big step and then apply a teaspoon and then take another big step, apply a teaspoon. And then you wanna go, once you finish one row, go four feet this way and start coming back. And so your neighbors might say, well, what is this person doing next door? Um, but it takes a little bit of time, but it's a great way to apply it. And why do we do that? Well, because it's a powder, we don't want it to blow away. So if you just go out there and dust your yard with it, it's not gonna work as well because it could blow away. In a pile, it's gonna work a little bit better. And then we wanna water it in. So you wanna make sure to water it in. Don't trust rainfall. I will talk about that. I'll probably say it four more times today. Uh, but don't trust the rain to apply your products for you. Always water them in. It's safer because if you get a heavy downpour, it can wash it down the drain and you've just wasted your money. So once you apply all of these little teaspoons around your yard, four feet apart, you're gonna put it anywhere. Landscape beds, lawns, uh, flower beds, vegetable gardens, you can put it basically anywhere because it's a beneficial bacteria. It's not gonna harm anybody. All it does is kill Japanese beetle grubs, which are the main food source of the mole. So what are we doing? We're irritating the mole. We're taking away their food source. Once you've applied it, basically what's gonna happen is those little piles are gonna start to dissolve. It's gonna activate the bacteria. It's gonna go down into the surface of the soil. And then grubs are gonna come through. And what do grubs do? Grubs the larva stage of the Japanese beetle. Grubs are going to eat the root system of your lawns typically. That's what they're there doing. Moles are gonna eat the grubs. The grubs are there to eat the root system of your lawn. So this is gonna actually benefit your yard and benefit your lawn too. Japanese beetles are not good insects. They eat a lot of our plants. They eat the grubs, the larva stage of the Japanese beetle. It's gonna eat the root system of your lawn and other root systems as well. They can get into different types of root systems. But as they chew those root systems of your lawn, they're gonna accidentally eat this bacteria. That's what's gonna happen, it's kinda of gross, but that bacteria is gonna grow on the inside of the grub. And then all of a sudden it just 
pops a little bit. <laughs> so it's going to explode a little bit and, and it's gross, but you don't see it. So that's, 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 that's the good thing. It's all underneath the ground. You won't see it. But in that process, the bacteria is growing and building and it's reproducing. It's getting bigger. The bacteria is getting bigger in your soil and you're getting more and more of it. So that's how it works. It builds. It takes about two years to completely rid your yard of, of Japanese beetle grubs. So the good news is for, for the first year and the second year, it's really reproducing. It's starting to kind of inoculate or populate the entire lawn area. So you apply it in little four foot piles and then over the time it's spreading and spreading and so Japanese beetles um, will, will definitely the, the grubs that they lay the eggs that they lay will turn into a, a Japanese beetle grub over time and then it'll ingest it it'll pop it'll spread the bacteria and you've got more of it so let's look at a couple images here just so we can see kind of what I'm talking about Japanese beetle grubs this is the grub this is what it looks like right there it usually is a white color it usually has a little bit of a red head to it um, and then it's got kind of a dark colored tail um, now they can change colors over time they can be different colors in different areas depending on the root systems that they're eating but typically this is what a Japanese beetle grub looks like this is what Japanese beetles look like Japanese beetles um, we'll talk about their life cycle here in a second because it is kind of important to understand that a little bit but Japanese Japanese beetles have a green kind of dome behind their head and kind of brownish colored wings. They're very, very identifiable, especially because they can devour a shrub and they move in herds. It's like they're always coming through and devouring lots and lots of things. And so Japanese beetles, if we can get rid of them, that's going to be a great thing. Here's their life cycle, and it's good to know this a little bit. You don't have to memorize it. In fact, if you buy Milky Spore, it's right here on the package. Their life cycle is right here on the package, um, but it's good to kind of understand it a little bit. And it might vary depending on where you live. Uh, but typically, uh, the, the, the colder months, November, December, January, February, the grubs are pretty deep in the soil. But then in April and May, in the spring, March, April, May, they're going to start to work their way up to the surface. They're going to start to get bigger and bigger. And then they're going to uh, basically, in June, kind of start the metamorphosis process, starting to change into a beetle. Then they hatch and they, in July and August, they will start to fly around, eat plants, which is bad for us, and then they'll mate, reproduce, and come and lay their eggs. And when they lay their eggs, one Japanese beetle can lay 50, up to 50, maybe even 60 eggs. So if you've got 10 Japanese beetles, now you've got 600, 500 to 600 uh, grubs. If you've got 100 Japanese beetles, now you've got a really big problem. Now you've got 5,000 to 6,000 grubs in your soil. So they can repopulate very, very quickly. Karen asks, what is the length of this presentation? It depends. It'll probably be about another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so typically I try and wrap it up right around 30, 40 minute mark. Um, so, okay. Now, August, the grubs start to hatch from the eggs and they start to feed again. And then they get deeper and deeper in the soil to protect themselves from the winter months and then they come back up. So that's kind of the quick roundabout life cycle. Now the cool thing about Milky Spore is you can apply it any time. So it doesn't matter what time you apply it, you can apply it any time of the year. As long as the ground is not frozen, we wanna make sure that we can get this into the surface of the soil. So if the ground is frozen, we don't wanna apply it then, but if it thaws, you can apply it. Because the bacteria, all it needs to do is just get water activated, it'll go into the surface, it'll live for a while, and then once the grub eats it, it'll ingest it, and it'll spread best times to apply if you're really looking for the best time would be in those kind of cooler, uh, warmer months. I, I won't say the summer, June, July, and August, maybe not so much, but the October, November, or September, October, November, and then again in March, April, and May. Great times to apply it, but you can really apply it any time of the year. Now, let's talk about Milky Spore other places. This is a powder, this is a concentrate. Let's talk about this a little bit more, um, but it's a concentrate, you apply it one time and you're done. That is the beauty of this product. That is amazing. Now you'll see a granular product sold at some of the big box stores or different places, um, but the, uh, the granular form, you have to, if you look at the bag, it says it right there. Is it, 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 you have to apply it four to five times throughout the year. So you gotta apply four to five bags of this big, huge bag that you've gotta push around the yard. This is a one time and done application, whether you're doing 2,500 square feet, 10,000 square feet, doesn't matter how many square feet you're doing, it's a little bit of an investment up front, but it's going to last. 
And that's the cool part. One time application and it lasts. So, Jap so Milky Spore can last in your soil up to 10 to 15 years. So this is really kind of a one and done. I mean, unless you're gonna be in the home for another 15 years, we'll come back and talk about it in 15 years. But Milky Spore is your long-term solution and it attacks their food source. So I saw a couple questions. What is the chance of getting rid of Japanese beetles when you leave next, live next to a wooded area and your neighbors don't treat their yards? How far do they travel? They can travel very far, and there's a lot of different things that you can do for Japanese beetles. Um, but yes, in a wooded area, or when you live next to a wooded area, you probably are gonna have more likelihood of having insect issues, or even mole issues. That's where they're coming from. I mean, before we lived here, before we cleared our property to, to build our homes, there was probably a wooded area, and, and moles lived in those. So they can dig in those. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, but uh, Japanese beetles can travel a very, very far distance. Um, it's pretty easy for them to, to get to get flying. They don't last a, a very long time. It's really in that summer month time frame, June, July, August, you know, a little bit of August, a little bit of uh, June, but mainly July is typically when they're out and eating and, and, and uh, reproducing and starting to lay their eggs. Um, but they can come into your yard. And the reason I bring that up, and that's why it's a great question, Judy, is is there's a lot of different things that you can do for Japanese beetles. There's uh, grub X or grub killers that you can apply in your soil and those work so a lot of people will use those. Like let's say if you're selling your home in the next year and you don't want to invest in, in a Milky Spore product, then you can apply a grub X. It'll kill the grubs for an entire season. It helps. But if you're planning on staying in your home or on your property for a while, you might as well make the investment because grub X or any of those grub killers, you're gonna have to apply every single year. You're gonna have to. And so you're just kind of wasting money because every year you're gonna have to do it in order to attack to, in order to attack this bigger problem of the moles and voles. So Brandy asks, is it pet safe? Completely pet safe, doesn't hurt anything except for Japanese beetle grubs. So if you don't think Japanese beetles are your source of your problem, I still probably think they probably are, then we can go a different route and I'll talk about that here in a minute. But almost predominantly when I talk to people and they dig in their yard, they're finding these grubs and Japanese beetle grubs are the number one food source for moles. So if we can get rid of the grubs, then we can really irritate the moles. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, what do I do if I have Japanese beetles but still have moles and voles? Uh, so if you don't have Japanese beetles and you still have moles and voles, we're going to talk about that right now in just a second. And then let's see, we've got just joined the meeting. I have added the castor oil based pebbles spread out this year back again. So what is the cure for moles and voles? So we're going to talk about that. So it's a twofold process. So if you just joined, we talked about milky spore, you got to get rid of their food source. They're there for a reason. Um, and then we're going to talk about the repellents and then we're going to talk about a lot of different little things here. So next product is to go back to our safe solution here. So we talked about Milky Spore. We kind of understand that now. Now we're going to talk about Repel-X. repel -X is the next one um, that I, I talked about. Now this could be any repellent. There's lots and lots of repellents out there. And as somebody mentioned, it is castor oil based. Castor oil based products are safe they're organic, you don't have to worry about uh, hurting anything. If you've got a dog that loves to dig a lot, then he might not dig as much or she might not dig as much. But um, other than that, it really doesn't hurt anything. Basically, castor oil um, will get into the fur of a mammal, like a mole, and it makes them just kind of feel yucky. They don't like digging in it, so they're not gonna love it. And then it kind of burns their face a little bit too. So it's not gonna kill anything, it's not gonna harm anything. It just makes where they're living not a great place to live and so they're not going to love it as much. So castor oil based products are great because they're safe and organic and when we pair it with something like Milky Spore, it's a great solution. So repel -X is a great one and the reason we like repel -X the best, again it could be I Must Garden, um, there's Molgo, uh, there's a ton of mole, um, I can't remember all of them, there's a ton of them out there and they're pretty much all castor based, um, castor oil based. But if you look at your labels, that's the most important thing, that's the telltale should be at least 20% castor oil. That's what you want. A lot of them out there are 10% castor oil. But this is a granulized 20% castor oil. But what's really cool about this one is the pellet itself. So this is Repelix and this is their pellet and it's recycled newspaper. Why is that cool? Well, most of your pelletized items, so like a pelletized fertilizer or a pelletized uh, mole repellent is going to be a castor oil sprayed on granite pieces or sprayed on sawdust. And so what that basically is, is the carrier. So when it comes down a conveyor belt, it's gonna be a little bit of you know this stuff and then they spray the castor oil on it. And then when you apply it in your yard, 
then the castor oil washes off and goes into the soil. It's just the carrier of the castor oil. But what's cool about the recycled newspaper granular that Repel-X uses is one, it's recycled, which is great for the environment, but two, it absorbs the castor oil. So as this pellet kind of breaks down over time, then you start to get a really nice kind of release of the castor oil, which means it can last a little bit longer. Now, it says on the package it can last up to, I think it's eight weeks, um, but, or it says four to six weeks, but, I've had it last a lot longer. So most products are gonna be right in that month to two month range. I've had this one last up to six months for me and work really, really well. So again, it depends on when you apply it. You wanna apply it in the early season, in the spring and in the fall. If you can get a spring and fall application, you're usually covered throughout the year. They also sell a liquid form. Liquid forms are attached to the end of a hose and can be sprayed, but I found that the granular is the best. So. Here's how you apply, because I just saw Christy said, are you applying this to the entire yard? Yes, but you're not probably going to apply it to the whole yard at one time. We wanna do a three application, a three phase repellent application. And why is that important? Well, it depends on the size of your yard. If you've got a thousand square feet, it's a pretty small yard, you probably can get away with just applying it to the entire yard. But if you've got a larger yard, if you've got anything over 2000 square feet, you definitely wanna do a three phase application. And why is that? Because if you apply this, it's gonna to start to really irritate them and they're gonna look for a safe place to go. And if you don't give them a safe place to go, then they kind of get stuck and they're kind of stuck in your yard and they don't really know where to go and the tunnels are gonna to start to be crazier and crazier because they still gotta eat, they still gotta feed um, and they're just trying to get out but we gotta give them a place to go. So that's why we wanna do a three phase application. So if you wanna do it kind of to spread them outward, <laughs> if you wanna do them to spread them backward, maybe force them to a neighbor's yard that you don't like as much or maybe force them into a wooded area or anywhere so and they can go under concrete so if you're worried I've got a driveway on this side I've got to force them over there I've got a field on the other side of the driveway that's where I want them they will go under the driveway don't worry about that at all so we want to do a three phase basically you want to apply one strip typically around about 1,000 to 2,000 square feet apply one strip of it and then wait two weeks and then apply it again and then wait two weeks and then apply it again. Every time we apply, we wanna water it in. That's very, very important that we get it nice and watered in. So we wanna do a three phase application. You can do it multiple different ways. You can go from front to back, you can go from back to front, you can go from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. You just wanna do it in three applications. Typically right around the 2,000 square feet mark is perfect. Now this comes in a couple different sizes. This comes, this is the, I think the eight pound or seven pound, seven pound. So this is the seven pound size. So now I'll go back. So this is our seven pound size. It also comes in a 24 pound pail, one pound per thousand square feet. Now you can apply a little bit heavier if you want to, but seven pounds will do 7,000 square feet. So it covers a large area. And again, like I said, it could be a lot of different repellents. Everybody doesn't live in our neck of the woods, so you might be looking for different products. You just need a repellent. So let's go back to the solution here, why we do these two things. This is a repellent and this is killing or getting rid of their food source. So we're not killing any moles. And, and why am I only talking about moles so much? Because moles are the start of the problem. So if you've got vole issues, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but if you can get rid of the moles, it's kind of a cycle. It's kind of something we gotta go back to the original. If we can get rid of their food source, we've irritated the mole. Now they can't find their main food source, the grub. They're gonna be unhappy about it. And then they, they are going to be unhappy about the fact that when they dig in the soil, they feel yucky, their face is burning, it makes their food taste bad. So they're really unhappy. And that's the best way to get rid of them is to do a two-fold process. Get rid of their main food source, make them unhappy and make them irritated, and that'll get them out of your yard. Now, let's get into the tricky part. What happens, right? <laughs> and let's see, I think I see a, a couple of different questions there too that I'll try and get to. So Milky Spore is, is better than Grub X. Yes, I definitely believe Milky Spore is better than Grub X. It can last 10 to 15 years. It's a one-time application. Grub X you gotta apply every single year. Now, if you used Grub X recently, you don't wanna apply this because you've killed the grubs in your soil and this needs grubs, right? So this is a bacteria that's going to infect those grubs and allow the bacteria to spread. So we need some grubs. So if you apply Grub X recently, or any of the grub killers, then you need to wait about probably five to six months to before you use Milky Spore. 
Um, do you reapply the first area when you do the second area? Lisa, great question. No, you do not. So going back to the application method, you apply it to one area and then you move to the next area because this can last so long. Now it depends on what you're using. If you're using uh, maybe like a liquid based, some of the liquid based only lasts four to six weeks and really legitimately only lasts four to six weeks. It depends on the temperature, it depends on your soil. There are a lot of variables out there. So that's kind of what I was gonna get into next is there are a lot of different issues here that can cause this to not be as easy as I make it sound, right? It's, it's a very easy solution to say repel them, get rid of their food source. Well, moles are stubborn. They're very, very stubborn animals. They built this tunnel system, right? So they built this, let's go back to the tunnel system. They spent a lot of time building this. They spent a lot of time creating their home. It'd be just like trying to get us kicked out of our homes. They don't wanna leave this. Now, when we do something like this, when we get rid of their food source and we, get, and we make them unhappy with a repellent, then they usually leave, but they probably don't leave this main tunnel. They're probably not leaving their nest area. They're probably just going to a neighbor's yard, going to a wooded area, going to a field, feeding and then every night coming back to their nest. So we haven't really solved the problem 100%. Now we've eliminated their main food source, but they don't wanna leave their home. They're stubborn and they don't really, really wanna go. So the next best thing to do is just keep on repelling them. And so that's why I say this is not an easy, quick, quick process. Some people have been very successful. Some people just use milky spore, had great success. Some people just use repellix, had great success. Somebody asked the question earlier, what do I do if I don't have any Japanese beetle grubs? If you're 100% sure you don't, then you just need to use a repellent because already they're trying to have to hunt for more. Now, let's talk about another subject. Why are they in our yard? Well, if most of you are watching, you're probably somewhat of a gardener, I would hope. If not, maybe you're getting into gardening or you want to get into gardening. And this doesn't always explain everything, but most people that take care of their yards have more insects, have more things happening underneath the soil, more earthworms, more grubs, why do we have more grubs? Because we've got more plants. The Japanese beetles are gonna eat the plants and they're gonna lay the eggs. And so we can create some problems by having a nice yard. It's not your fault. It's good to have a nice yard, but that's why they wanna live there. You, they've got a nice home. They've got all the resources they need. They're not gonna go to some barren you know, yard that nobody keeps track of and it's got lots of weeds and there's no shrubs for the voles to eat. So no animal's gonna go wanna live there. They wanna live in a nice cushy area. They wanna live in a nice lawn that's cool, cool in the summer, it gets rained on, maybe you have an irrigation system. So all of these things are just really enticing them. And back to the tunnel system, they built this. They don't wanna leave it. And then I mentioned earlier, they're nomadic as well. So they tend to be nomads and sometimes, you know, a male can get kicked out or sometimes they just say, this person's applying Repellex and Milky Spore and I gotta get out of here. This is not gonna be the best home. So they move from one place to the next and then they find a tunnel system and they say, great, I've already got something built and they're back. And that happens to a lot of people. And I know a lot of people have experienced it. I've experienced it. So trust me, I'm in the same category. I've used Milky Spore, I've used Repellix. I used Milky Spore about five or six years ago on my newer home. Um, and I definitely don't have Japanese beetle grubs anymore, so that's good. I do have a fair amount of earthworms, so it makes it a little bit harder um, because I know that I've got a fairly good soil and I've got lots of earthworms and, and ground crickets. I've got lots of little ground crickets and, and different things out there that they can eat, but it takes more of them. So I know that they're not super, super happy because they're having to hunt a little bit more and I just keep on using Repellex. Now there's a lot of different things you can do. I saw a question from Christy saying, um, that, that can you use these together? Yes, you can definitely use these together. So they are completely organic, completely safe. You can apply them at the exact same time if you want to. I typically uh, try to apply things differently or at different times. So I personally would go and put Milky Spore down first, get that going, get that activating. And then I would come back and use Repellex. Let me go back to my full screen here. Um, and then I would use Repellex because we're gonna do it in a three phase process anyway. So that just kind of keeps me on track. Do this one week, the next weekend apply Repellex for the first one, and then you know right around every, every two weeks. You could probably get away with one week if you wanted to, but every two weeks, and you'll see them move. When you apply Repellex or any repellent, just make sure you apply it in that three-phase process. Because I've done it before where I've put it over my entire yard and they went crazy and they were stuck and they didn't know where to go because they're trying to get out and they're trying to look for a safe place to go and so you gotta give them a little bit of direction of which way you're trying to push them. Um, all right, so let's see, I think we've got a couple questions there. Does this process have any effect on fire ants? No, it doesn't. 
Unfortunately, um, there are things, Bruce, that you can do for fire ants. There's different things that you can apply, but none of this is gonna hurt the fire ants. The good thing about this solution is it's safe for everybody. It's even safe for the moles and voles, which maybe you wanna kill them. But here, let's talk about killing them for a second because there's lots and lots of different products out there and you're gonna see a lot of them. The, the mold killers, the poison earthworm looking things, um, Ramek, there's a ton of different poisons out there. The reason we don't like poisons is one, if you have pets. So if you've got a dog or a cat and they're ever in your yard, then you run that risk. Also, if you use poisons, and a mole or a vole dies from that poison, another animal could eat it and then they've ingested the poison. So we don't really like to use poisons. All of this is completely safe. So I know people say, you know, or safe for birds, etc. Yes, completely safe. Castor oil and a beneficial bacteria that only affects Japanese beetle grubs. So you don't have to worry about that. Do you apply the Repel-X every four feet like the Milky Spore? Apply the Repel-X in bands. So apply the Repel-X like this in a three phase process and you wanna do it working them in a direction that you wanna go. And then with the milky spore, you wanna apply every four feet a little pile. So pretty, pretty easy to apply these and completely safe. Now, traps, let's talk about traps because everybody always says, well, I wanna catch them. And I don't mind if you wanna use a trap, that's fine. But as I mentioned, one litter from one female can be five to six maybe seven. So they can have a fair amount in their litter each spring. And so how many are you catching? Usually it's probably like once a month, maybe twice a month that you're catching one. And that makes it hard because I don't know how many are under there. It could be one, it could be 10, it could be a hundred. They live in pretty big families. They can be pretty small families. It really just depends. And so it's very hard to tell how many you have. Some might get kicked out and go to your neighbor's yard, you know, go a different tunnel system. As I mentioned, they're nomadic. They can kind of run around. So it's really difficult to know if you're really getting them all. And even if you kill them all, then eventually somebody else is going to find this tunnel system and they're going to be back. And it's a long process to kill them. This is a little bit quicker. I know a repellent will get them out of your yard. That'll solve a lot of the problems. It's the quickest solution. It's the fastest solution get them out of your yard, apply in the three phase process, and then milky spores really gonna irritate them because you've eliminated their main food source. And so by using this two-fold process, we really think it's best. It's better than traps, it's better than the poisons, it's better than anything else, home remedies like juicy fruit and hair and peanut butter and different things like that. It's really difficult to trap them, so let's get rid of them. Now, I also mentioned voles, right? Voles, a lot of people might say, you know what, I'm done with the moles. I don't really care. If they're in my yard, they're natural aerators, right? So we can kind of talk about it that way and say, okay, they're good for the lawn because they're aerating the soil, um, even though most of us want to get rid of them. But maybe the voles have come in because they come in through those tunnels and they're going to divert off into your flower beds. Maybe they've come in and they want to start eating your plants, which can cost you a lot of money. You know, love hostas, they love to eat those. So every time you plant a hosta and it's gone the next day, or, or even some of your annuals, they love to eat, you know, petunias and begonias and, and pansies, lots and lots of options for them to eat things. And if you're, if you're planting things and they're eating them, then that's a problem. Now, you can use things like a vole block or a, a soil perfector, which is a rock substance. Basically, it's a, a, it's a slate piece that's fired and it pops like a piece of popcorn and you can put those all around it and so you basically it aerates the soil it's a good soil amendment that you can plant around each plant but you got to plant it around every single plant and eventually that root system is going to grow out of that boundary that you create so that protects the heart of it but it's not going to protect everything so i like it but it doesn't work great but what i do like is if you're trying to adjust attack bowls is repellex also makes a systemic repellent now it's really was originally designed for deer because deer and rabbits eat the top of the plant it's capsaicin which is hot pepper. It's on that same recycled newspaper granular that they do really well. It's got a cap on it. This, or this cup, I should say. This cup is great for one square foot. So, you know, one hosta. You just fill this up and you apply it to that one hosta and one and done for the entire year. That's what's so cool about this. It's got a nice kind of pleasant fragrance. It's not bad. Um, and what happens is it's capsaicin, so it's hot pepper. So this is gonna get absorbed by the root system of your plant and then the plant is protected top and bottom. So if you're trying to protect your plants, especially established plants, uh-oh, I've got moles now. All of a sudden I'm worried I've got voles. I've lost one plant down here on this row. Is it gonna start working its way down? 
go and apply the systemic repellent. It comes in a one and a half pound jar and a three pound jar. And this is a great one, especially if you're planting pansies and you've got deer and rabbit issues, but if you've got vole issues, this is a great solution, is this Repellex systemic repellent. And systemic means it goes into the system of the plant, and because it's capsaicin, it's completely organic, it's completely safe, it's not gonna hurt anybody. Don't use it on your tomatoes, don't use it on your edible plants. It's gonna make your edible plants taste very spicy and you're not gonna like it very much. But it's a great option if you're just saying, I'm giving up on the moles, I'm giving up on all of that stuff in the lawn, I just wanna protect my plants, I just wanna protect my stuff that's in the ground, we've got a solution for that too. But we really feel like this is the best solution. Get rid of their food source, Eliminate their main food source with milky spore. It's gonna really irritate them. They're not gonna be happy. One time application with the concentrate. You don't have to do four or five applications in a year. One and done, lasts 10 to 15 years. Super, super easy to apply. Water it in, done. You're gonna kill all of your Japanese beetle grubs for the next two years, and then it's gonna last 10 to 15 years after that. Then apply Repellex or any repellent Apply it in the three-phase process. That way you can eliminate them and get them out of your yard. It's quick. If you think you don't have grubs, you can eliminate this step, but I still say you probably do. But then apply a repellent. Our favorite is Repellex, but there's a lot of them out there. Just apply it properly so you're not getting them stuck in your yard. If you start to see them coming back, time to apply again. You start to see those tunnels coming back in from your neighbor's yard, time to apply Repellex again. You can apply a barrier. So we could apply like an eight foot barrier. Don't make it like a two foot. Don't just go sprinkle a little bit of rounds because they can get right through that and then they're stuck again. But you wanna apply a nice thick barrier so that, that way they, if they, when they hit that wall, they kind of go back out and they say, oh, well, no, not time to come back in there again. Um, but keep on using the repellent, keep on using it, keep after them. It's the only way to do it um, because I've tried traps, I've tried poisons. You just don't know if you're killing them all. It doesn't work very well. It's not safe for pets. It's not safe for wildlife. This is completely organic. It's the safe solution. It's the best solution. You got to do a two-fold process. Attack their food source and get them out of your yard. All right, I know there's lots of questions that are gonna lead to different things, so let's see what I missed here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and make sure I got everything. All right. What is the chance of getting rid of Japanese beetles when you leave next to a wooded area? We talked about that a little bit. Um, it, it's completely fine to get rid, I think you'll get rid of them. It's not gonna be an issue. Um, yes, Japanese beetles are gonna be a little bit harder to get rid of because you've got the wooded area and they're gonna be nesting there. Another thing that I think, I don't know if I mentioned was the traps. A lot of people put the Japanese beetle traps out. The problem with those is it does trap them, it does kill them is it attracts them into your yard. You don't wanna attract Japanese beetles to your yard. So I don't recommend using the traps necessarily, but using milky spore is a great, safe, organic way to control a Japanese beetle problem if you have one. Um, is it pet safe? Yes. Uh, what if I don't have Japanese maples, but I do have moles of voles? We talked about that. Just use repellix, keep using it, keep using it, keep using it. And you can apply this. This works on voles too. So you can apply this to a landscape, um, to a flower bed, to a vegetable garden. It'll get voles out. It's completely safe, completely organic. It works for voles too, because they do dig. They're not as heavy or aggressive diggers as moles, but they will dig. And this is a good way to get voles specifically just out too. So apply this everywhere. Uh, let's see. When is the best time to apply milky spore? In the spring and fall is best, but you can apply it really any time that the ground is not frozen. Um, so Christy said, so they come because of a food source. Great, I, I missed this. So they can come for multiple reasons, as I, and, and I think I've mentioned kind of all of them, is they're nomadic, they can come through, all of a sudden they see a tunnel system that's nice and big and expanded, and you can't do anything about that tunnel system, it's too deep in the ground. Um, it's not irritating you, so it's not bothering you, but they can come by, see a tunnel system, say, this is great, I've got a new home. Uh, but they might come by and they say, yep, this is a great place, there's a ton of food source here, there's a ton of Japanese beetles, I can smell them, I can hunt them, I can, I'm gonna, this is my new home, and then they create their home. Sometimes they create their home just brand new. Um, so that can be it. Uh, there's lots of different reasons that they can come, but mainly, if you eliminate their food source, if I told you that you can't get food anymore, you would move. So the same thing here. If, if we can eliminate their main food source, they're not gonna be happy. We can't eliminate all of it, right? We can't eliminate earthworms. We can't eliminate some of the other insects that are good and beneficial. So we're not gonna be able to completely eradicate their food source, but this is their main food source. Remember, one grub equals 10 earthworms. Um... Are you applying this to the entire yard? Yes, both of them apply to the entire yard. 
We answer, do you apply the, reapply the first area when you apply the second area? I would apply the first area and then do the second area. Don't go and reapply. You can, it's not gonna hurt it, but you don't have to. Will milky spore affect native beetles in addition to Japanese beetles? No, it just affects Japanese beetles. Great question, Tracy. Thank you so much. Just Japanese beetles, but they're the biggest problem. They're a nuisance. They're, um, they're, they're a problem bug. They're not something that we're trying to protect for sure. My backyard is bad, but not my front. Should I treat the front yard as well? Well, Barbara, that's a good question. Uh, it depends on if there's a barrier system enough that they won't kind of get through. I would probably try and say, okay, my backyard is bad. Let's get the repellent process and let's start up against the house on the backyard and force them back or force them left or right. I probably wouldn't go left and right as much as I would keep forcing them back because if you force them the other way, obviously, yes, they will end up in your front yard. And it could still happen, but now you know how to get rid of them if they do, but hopefully it doesn't. Um, Christy said, do you have to use both together? Um, you don't have to use both together, but you can apply both of them at the same time if you want. I recommend applying one one week, usually milky spore the first week, then start your Repel-X in the three-phase process. Uh, but you don't have to use them together, no. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, if you're maybe planning on selling your home in a year and you don't want to invest in Milky Spore, because Milky Spore can be expensive. Depends on where you buy it. Milky Spore is $39.99 for 2,500 square feet and $119 for 10,000 square feet. So it's a little bit of an investment, but remember, it's one and done. It's a one-time application done for 10 to 15 years. So that's the benefit of it. Um, Dogs and cats doesn't hurt any animals. Should we push the street? Uh, should we push? Should we push them to the street or neighbor's yard? Well, if you don't like your neighbor, push them to your neighbors. <laughs> but um, if you do like your neighbors, maybe y'all can join efforts. Yes, you can push them to a street. They can go under streets. So push them right to the street. That's fine. They'll either decide to go left or right, or they'll decide to go under and onto the other side. So definitely not a problem there. Uh, Safe for birds. Yep. Do you apply the Repel-X every four feet like most were? We talked about that. We talked about how to apply Repel-X. So do you treat areas that are not obviously affected? Yes. So Barbara, good question there too. And I mentioned it now a couple times. I don't know that I mentioned it when I was talking about it is yes, apply it to the entire area. Everywhere, you might as well. Unless you're in that one situation where you've got them in your back but you don't have them in your front, I try and force them to the back, but I probably would apply Milky Spore everywhere. You might as well, because it's a one time and done approach. Um, did I miss discussing solar ultrasonic, ultrasonic repellents? Yet, yeah, no, you didn't. Great question, Alice. I didn't mention them. I find that they don't work very well. I find that you got to put a lot of them out there. So now you got these little things stuck all over the yard. They're kind of making a buzzing noise. It does irritate them. I'm not saying don't throw everything that you want at them. By all means, I've seen people with traps and ultrasonic uh, repellents and regular repellents and milky spore and you know anything that they can do to throw at them. I've seen that done before and it's not a bad thing. You know, some of us are so upset with them, uh, but I have found that they don't work very well. Eventually they typically get used to it. It's kind of like the home remedy type of thing. Eventually they're going to say, eh, whatever. I'll deal with the little buzzing noise every 10 to 15 seconds. Um, which one's the phase approach? Repel-X. Can you give us a cost on the products, please? Okay, great question, because I just mentioned the Milky Spore. Milky Spore, $39.99 for the 2,500 square foot size. 10,000 square feet is 119. The Repel-X is $19.99 for the seven pound. I wanna say for the 24 pound, it's $59.99, I think. How to get rid of the empty tunnels. So Paulette, unfortunately, there's no way to get rid of the empty tunnels. So let's say we get rid of the moles and the voles and they never come back. And those permanent tunnels over time will start to kind of hopefully fall apart. Now the feeding tunnels, those will go away naturally. If you've gotten rid of the moles, you can pat, pat them down with your feet. If you've got a riding lawnmower, you can use that as you mow your grass. Um, your push mower, typically the wheels are too hard and get into the grooves and that's most likely why you're here because you hate mowing your lawn uh, with all those tunnels. But uh, basically just pushing them down over time. You could rent a roller and roll your yard if you wanted to, but I don't think you need to go that far. They'll naturally go down over time. 
Does the Repellix also irritate groundhogs? Yes, anything that digs in the soil. In fact, I've used Repellix on uh, rabbits that have uh, formed a burrow underneath my uh, shed. So yes, it works on any mammal basically, or any really animal, but not like snakes and lizards, they're reptiles, but basically any mammal. Um, it's gonna get in their fur. If they're in the ground, it's gonna get in their fur, they're not gonna like it. It's gonna get on their food, they're not gonna like it. It's gonna burn their face a little bit. So if you've got squirrels that bury acorns in your yard, they may not bury as many acorns. Um, how can you tell if you have moles or voles? We see raised tunnels, but no large entry hole anywhere we've seen. So Brandy, great question. Most likely if they're in their yard and you've got tunnel systems on top of the surface, it's a mole for sure, because voles aren't going to be digging typically in the lawn area. They're going to be digging into your flower beds. Typically what you see from voles are little holes, um, in the flower beds somewhere kind of randomly, because they will come up at night. If they don't find a root system underneath the ground, they'll come up at night and eat some foliage just so they have a little snack. But typically they like root systems. That's what they're going after and they will dig for them. Um, let's see, but most likely you've got uh, voles. Can you flood the tunnels and the hills? All right, Brian, so great question. Yes, you can, but it's not going to hurt them any. They've been through plenty of heavy rainfalls. Uh, water doesn't go through tunnels very well. So water, when it goes into a tunnel, is gonna to start to work its way into the soil. So they're used to rain, they're used to water, it's not gonna hurt them. In fact, typically what you're gonna see is them cleaning out their tunnels after that. I've seen people, I think it used to be called the redneck mole killer. It basically was a uh, thing that you attach to your exhaust on your car, and then you put a hose into the tunnel. That's not gonna work. I mean, it might work, it might kill them, but it's probably not very good for the environment. It's probably not good for your soil. So um, I would say stick to something that I think is tried and true, which is get rid of their food source and repel them out of your yard. Um, our mulch, I think, so, uh, sorry, are mulch beds attractive to them? Yes, for sure. And Monica, great thing. What also attracts moles and voles? Mulch beds definitely are because they're going to be nice and warm. It's going to be more of a consistent temperature, warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Um, that's why you typically see them around your driveways um, during cold nights because all of a sudden they realize that the, the cement's going to warm up in those cold time frames, especially in the winter during the day. They're going to go to the, the edge of your concrete and your walkways because it's a little bit nicer and usually the insects will migrate a little bit more to those areas too. So yeah, definitely they're going to be attracted to mulch, but not saying don't mulch. It's just, let's get rid of them. Um, Lowe's nor Home Depot, Ace don't carry either product. I don't believe so, Nancy. Um, so I'm pretty sure Lowe's and Home Depot might carry the Milky Spore granular products, but like I said, it's gonna be four to five applications in a year. So really the best thing to do is get some Milky Spore uh, concentrate. It's the best way to get rid of them. Repellex is one repellent. There's multiple repellents out there. I like this the best because it lasts the longest. Um, how about a narrow creek? Can they go under that? Yes, Sherry, they'll definitely be able to go under a narrow creek or they'll work their way around it. I wouldn't worry too, too much about that. Where do I find these products? We talked about that here at McDonald Garden Center. If you can't get them here, um, I'm sure you can get Milky Spore or Repellix. I know Repellix, I think you can buy right from their website and they'll ship it to you. So if you go to Repellix, I believe it's Repellix.com. See if I can find it. Da, 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 da. Let's see. I don't see a website listed on here, but I'm pretty sure they sell it online. Yeah, okay, sorry, repellex.com. And then Milky Spore, I'm sure they have a website. I think it's under their parent company, which is St. Gabriel Organics. St. Gabriel Organics. Um, but you can pick this up probably on like Amazon or something. I would think they'd have Milky Spore and then Repellex. But if you're in our neck of the woods, we hope you come and shop with us. Let's see, uh, how is Milky Spore applied with a spreader hose? Milky Spore is a powder, you wanna apply it a teaspoon every four feet, or you can use a dispensing tube that we also sell, it's a tube, it's just a cardboard tube with a little Parmesan grater on the end of it. You basically just turn it like your Parmesan, like your cheapy Parmesan shake that you would put on your uh, spaghetti. Um, it's got that kind of dispenser on it and you just basically tap it every four feet. I like the teaspoon. I think I feel like I'm getting a little bit more scientific with it. So take a teaspoon, put it in a little pile every four feet, super easy to apply. It's a powder. You don't need a spreader or anything or a hose or anything. Now you will need a hose to water it in. I definitely recommend that. So Brandy, good question. Lisa, they are only, they, they are only under my maple tree, which appears to be dying. Does this mean it has something they are liking to eat? I don't see any Japanese maples on the tree or Japanese beetles on the tree. Well, Japanese beetles you won't see right now, Lisa. Um, it depends on where you live, obviously, but uh, Japanese beetles are, have, have laid their eggs already and the eggs have already hatched and they're starting to uh, turn 
turn into um, a grub. And the grubs are probably, so what it could be, Lisa, is the Japanese maple is struggling, the root system is decaying, it's becoming an easier root system to eat, so there's probably lots of insects around that root system. There's probably lots of earthworms, there's probably lots of crickets, there's probably lots of grubs eating the root system of that Japanese maple. And then the moles are just coming and having a smorgasbord. They've got a great place to kind of pick them off and eat them. So unfortunately, we got to get them out. So I would definitely use Repellex, get the moles out of there, and then use a milky spore-based product. If you feel like you need a little bit quicker acting, milky spore is going to be pretty fast for what's there. It just doesn't typically can, uh, have enough inoculant or the way to spread over the entire surface of your yard. But I would still probably apply milky spore because it's still going to act pretty quick on those grubs that might be eating that tree. We might need to look at something a little bit more hardcore to take care of your problem to hopefully get that Japanese maple to survive. So Lisa, if you live in our neck of the woods, I would definitely come in and let it see if we can get a little bit more information on, on how to apply that. Uh, Darlene, what time of year do I apply? You can apply Repellex any time of the year, Milky Spore any time of the year that the ground's not frozen, but the best time is in spring and fall. You do not, or so, you know, great question, Jackie. I didn't mention how to spread this. Yes, you can use a spreader for this. It's got spreader settings on it. It's got spreader settings on the website if you go there. Um, but yes, you can spread, put this in a spreader, but you can also use your hand. It's basically one pound per thousand square feet, so it goes a very long way. But if you apply a little bit more, that's not a bad thing either. Um, let's see, I think everybody there. Great presentation. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, this was great. Really good. Really enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, looks like everybody's saying thank you, so thank you so much. Let me see if there's any more questions. All right, I think I, oh, is now the time to apply milk support? Yes, it's a great time. So September, October, November, great times to apply. This is the fall season. The grubs are up. They're actively eating the lawn system, so it's a great time to apply. All right, everybody. Everybody's saying thank you, so I will go to my last slide and say thank you all. Uh, this was our Solutions for Moles and Bowls here at McDonald Garden Center. I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you for joining. It was a great turnout. Uh, we really appreciate it. Come in and see us here at McDonald Garden Center. If you live in our neck of the woods, if you don't, go visit your local garden center. They're going to have your local expertise and knowledge that you need to be successful. So we really support our local garden centers and come and support ours here at McDonald Garden Center in Hampton Roads. Hope to see you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.